want you to imagine this. It's late summer, and you're young again. You wake up on a Sunday morning and hear a light crackle against your windshield. It's raining. You eat a big breakfast, take a warm shower, get a hot glass of chalky milk. All your chores were done the night before. Your room is clean. You have no homework. With not a worry in the world, you lay in bed, all snuggled up, and put on a movie. Now, what movie did you pick? And why was it Coraline? For those of you who embarrassingly chose something else, Coraline is a 2009 stop-motion horror fantasy film adaptation directed towards PG audiences by Henry Selleck, the acclaimed director of Yeah! This. Coraline follows Caroline Wood. Coraline! Coraline Jones. As she begrudgingly moves into a new home with her mundane parents and strange neighbors. <laughs> The dull environment soon turns into an eerie one, however, once Coraline discovers an alternate world filled with all she currently desires. The cracks in the utopia begin to shine through, though, as Coraline encounters... What's shaking, baby? So how could a film filled with so much uneasiness, horror, and sadness be the perfect rainy day comfort movie? Well... I think it has a lot to do with the psychedelic characteristics within it and the lesson it teaches us with them. Now, bear with me. Psychedelic therapy, a practice which involves treating patients with minor doses of psychedelics, most commonly LSD, has been a studied form of treatment in the medical field for as long as time. Within these studies, and especially recently, there's been a major correlation made between blissful comfort and these psychedelic experiences. Some have used these drugs to journey into the uncharted tunnels of the mind in search of medical and scientific truth. Now I'm not saying that Coraline is, or should be, a substitute for therapeutic treatment, LSD, or reason to go get zoinked to find some relaxation. What I'm saying is that it's hard to not debate the connections. There's just such an inherent stimulus with the psychedelic artistry out of the 60s and onward. Doesn't it just tickle your mind in the right way to look at a Victor and Moscoso poster? Or listen to a Pink Floyd song? Or just watch Coraline? What's so profoundly beautiful about Coraline specifically though, in comparison to these other incredible psychedelic works, is the contrasting it does between two worlds. Instead of showcasing a predominantly trippy atmosphere with no tangible reality or characters to initially attach to, Coraline geniusly constructs a relatable world firstly to introduce its characters and concepts to us. It's tedious, flat, prosaic, and lifeless. But these are some of the characteristics of tranquility, just on the other side of the same comfort coin. Coraline continuously flips this calming coin between psychedelic and mundane stimuli to equally capture both ways of soothing. But what happens when things get too spooky, or even downright uncomfy at times? Well, they most certainly do. And it's hard to ignore. When you've learned to be a loving daughter. <laughs> now there's already countless great videos out there about what makes Coraline so terrifying, so I'm not gonna go too deep into that rabbit hole of terrors, but I will pull from them the effect that it has on seeing our hero deal with them. Kids love to be scared. We all do. But there's a difference between leaving them hanging out there with their fears and then bringing them safely home. Kids love it when someone like them stands up against a real evil, something really horrendous and terrifying, and they win. Now, all of my favorite horror films end, for the most part, in an intolerable gray area that keeps me up at night staring at the ceiling in discomfort. But Coraline is completely different in how it intends to leave its audience. It's not overly simple in its conclusion, but it's not eerily abstract either. As I've stated before and will again, Coraline is a masterful at balancing contrasting aesthetics that in the end blend together as this ideal mixture for relaxation. At the same time that we felt a tiresome atmosphere throughout that is mundane but also familiarly comfortable, Selick has also put us through this hypnotic experience of another world we've all probably visited in our lifetimes in some form or another. I didn't know I had another mother. Of course you do. Everyone does. Every element of the film is just so handcrafted to imperfect 
perfection, that it's impossible to deny the masterful filmmaking of it all, that just feels like a nice warm blanket top of you in the end on a late Sunday evening. And thank Henry and Burton for their past successes in stop motion, because without those templates for success to build off of, Coraline could have been live action. To this day, it's one of, if not the, most impressive stop motion features to ever be made. It was the longest for a while, and kickstarted a company whose efforts to amaze in this medium have never ceased since. And the stop motion is not just a stylistic choice, but a deliberate tool for the storytelling. While we're brought to these quite cartoonish environments, with bright colors and ridiculous architectures, the stop motion keeps us grounded in that calming reality. No matter how alien things begin to transform into, there's always something we're able to grab onto that keeps us in that tranquil state. We know that Coraline can get through this, and we want her to. Now there's a saying in animation that is used to prevent any lack of meaning in a work. It's a badge meant to remind that each and every one of these psychedelic constructions cannot be pretentious and cannot be without emotional purpose. One shot, one thought. It's pretty much a true way to go. And with Coraline, there's nothing that rings truer about it. These hypnotizing, sedating visuals aren't merely aesthetic setters, but they come together in one of the most powerful messages I've ever seen in a family feature. Now I've known people, and I don't want to get too specific, but who have abused psychedelics and other similar shortcuts to happiness and comfort, relaxation, and it's painful time and time again to see what happens to Coraline in her dream world happen to these people as well. So in no way am I wanting to promote this type of behavior. I just think it's really neat that we have a movie geared towards everyone that teaches us to just hold on a little longer. And soon, the things we dream of having will start to become a reality. And I find a lot of comfort in the earned happy ending. Yeah.